Welcome to the channel everybody. My name is Ryan and we are trying out Caves of Cud today. Yes, this one has a very unusual title, that's for sure, but um, I have played this one in the past, years ago in fact. It's still an early access game. It's been in development for quite some time, but the developers just put out a recent update, which was more just like an informational update, a roadmap as it were, but um, they're saying that probably late 2024 for the full release of Caves of Cud finally. Of course, they don't want to be nailed down with any specific dates, which is totally cool, and I get that. You know, I'd rather have a game developed for a long amount of time and have it come out just perfect, or close to perfect as possible, than have something half-cooked, you know, if you know what I'm saying. But either way, if you're a fan of some of the games I play on my channel, such as Unreal World, or Dwarf Fortress, or some of those low-graphic but high-detailed simulations then you will like caves of cut trust me this is an rpg roguelike with a post-apocalyptic world i think it's set after like a nuclear apocalypse but there's mutations and stuff so it is really its own animal i'll tell you that it's very unique it takes a lot of the procedural generation into use for its maps and it's it's like phrasing and wording of certain descriptives but i can't can't do it justice in my description so let's just jump right into it now like i mentioned i haven't played in a long long time but i did boot it up beforehand just to make sure the audio levels were good and stuff a lot of things have changed but i do want to point out too that this game has just an immense amount of options you can go through you can change so much stuff about this it's almost a little bit overwhelming no doubt but um i did go in here just a co couple quick notes and i boosted the size of the UI up to one and a half because you'll see it's got a unique user interface and of course like it's there it is so yeah the overlay overlay ui is at one and a half times normal that you would start with but uh, i just did that for recording purposes so hopefully you guys can see it a little bit better but enough talking let's get into a brand new game all right, so let's hit new game. Now, there's a few definite changes since the last time I played. And if you guys are veterans to this game or if you've been playing for a long time, you want to drop me some tips or whatever, go ahead. Feel free in the comments section. No worries, no worries. I'm probably going to die. I'll tell you that. We will be playing classic permadeath. So once you lose your character, that's it. Of course, you come back and you start a new one and take what you learn from your previous death and hopefully exceed each time. But you can can do role playing um which i'm not sure what that is then there's wander which is interesting most most creatures begin neutral to you no xp for killing more xp for discoveries and performing the water ritual which we'll talk about shortly if you don't know what that is and checkpointing at settlements too so again this is new these different game modes i've never tried those before and then there's a daily challenge that is something that was previously in the game when i played years ago but um it's basically just you know a unique setup that changes every day but we're gonna like i said gonna start with a classic one here and and we will go through a lot of the early character generation in detail. I'm basically trying to relearn the game myself so that we can be ready for 1.0 release, you know, and do a full run through and series with it because I'm really excited for this game. It's awesome. Okay, so um, another thing I should note too, most of the game can be controlled with the mouse and that's what I'll be using. But again, so many options. If you want to do keyboard setup, if that's how you like to play these kind of games, feel free. Certainly set it up in the options. Okay, so we want a new, a random, a library character. So a build, you can like save your builds if you really like them and you don't want to go through the tedious process of character creation each time you die. Um, or you can just, yeah, replay the last one. So we'll start a brand new one here so we can look at all these options. Now, there's two basic character types you can choose from, which will have a pretty big impact on how your character levels up and becomes more powerful. The first is the mutated human, and the second is the true kin. So this is one of the big choices right here. We're going to go mutated. This is, you get mutations as the game progresses and you level up. Moderate starting attributes, so you're not like super overpowered right at the start, obviously. 
and there is a whole reputation system in the game which definitely has effect on questing and vendors and all that so this just gives you the note as a mutated human you have a negative 600 starting reputation with the Pudas Templar so watch out for those guys but um, true kin are more like pure humans they're unmutated so in order to level up and become more powerful they need cybernetics so they have higher starting attributes I guess is like an unmutated true human they don't have like the disabilities or whatever but um 20 bonus skill points each level so you don't get powers when you level up you get your skills leveled up and you got to go out and find cybernetics in the world to enhance yourself with which is cool bonus resistance is based on arcology of origin which is we'll cover that shortly and may rebuke robots i've forgotten what the rebuke spelled uh, i think it's like turn undead but we'll see all right so like i said we're going to go with the mutated human if you're new starting off try the mutations first it is a little bit easier than true kin because like i said you got to get out there and explore these deadly dungeons and stuff to level your powers with these people this way you can kind of uh, just go around kill the easy stuff till you get powerful enough now okay so we get to choose kind of our background essentially here and let me see actually let's go back real quick all right we do want mutated human okay i just want to make sure i chose the right thing here so we got the apostle for two ego customs and folklore intimidate proselytize so those are i think like um dialogue options Arcanaut plus agility, short play, tinkering, scavenger. I'm going to tell you that we, <clears throat> we can go through all these, but the one that I like to do best is tinkerer. This one gives us a plus two intelligence, the tinkering skill, laying mines, setting bombs, disassembling, repairing, tinkering, plus 100 reputation, and you begin with a number of random artifacts and scraps. So the artifacts include everything from grenades to and how, like healing injectors and stuff to like weird time traveling or time altering devices crazy stuff you know post-apocalyptic keep that in mind so let's just look through some of them gray beard negative strength plus willpower cudgel berate calloused gunslinger this is one i played too good one for starting because in addition to mutant abilities you will find weapons and stuff rifles pistols bows swords all that good stuff um akimbo i think that means he can shoot both hands right and 200 reputation we won't worry about reputation right now strength axe dismember charge and butchery that's the marauder we've got pilgrim he's got willpower self-discipline fasting way iron mind and wayfaring and yes food is a thing too in this game so you do need to feed yourself i believe to toughness and cooking and stuff C wayfaring wilderness lore for the sand dunes harvestry weathered reputation and he starts with the recycling unit that i think that's kind of like um the still suit from dune i want to say because in this post apocalyptic world water is the big thing that's the currency and if you find fresh water or like a source of it you've struck gold essentially um all right so the scholar plus two intelligence tinkering physics nostrums i have no idea what that is tactics customs and folklore harvestry this guy seems like he'd be real cool too this is another one i might go with at some point uh there's the tinker we're coming back to him warden two strength long blade shield shield slam blow bow and rifle oh he's badass isn't he yeah, yeah yeah and then we've got the water merchant so again water super important ego short blade snake oiler oh then maybe that's like a dialogue skill i'm not sure reputation allowed entrance to many cell uh settlements for purposes of trade so as you're kind of seeing there's just tons of different factions with different settlements controlled and stuff so yeah that all plays a part into your travels and adventuring and exploring and the final one the water vine farmer plus two toughness cooking and gathering harvestry axe wilderness lore Starts with a random cooking ingredients. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, some of these have just have been added since the last time I played, so I'm kind of learning these myself too for the first time. But bear with me, guys. Just soak in all the gloriousness here because it is an in-depth game and we're just scratching the surface. Okay, Tinkerer. We will select him. There we go. 
and chimera okay so now another huge choice awaits us right here we are looking at our mutations which there's a whole big list of them here i wish i think the ui is kind of you know what let me change the size of it while we're still in character creation that might help okay now it's set to auto 1.25 which we might just go with this now let's just see how this looks already it's a bit nicer seeing all the character types here in one screen instead of having to scroll so there's our tanker let's see what the next page looks like yeah this is how it's supposed to look here okay so we've got our list right at the top we've got three this is the big choice here um i don't think you have to do one of these three we could leave it blank and as you can see it does every one of these numbers is a point count or point cost i should say necessarily and you've got 12 to start with but it will help your build i'll just put it that way if you kind of focus because essentially what we have here is a chimera you only manifest physical mutations very important there and all of your mutation choices when manifesting a new mutation are physical so you're going to get like horns or you know wings or st physical stuff as opposed to mental and da -da -da -da, whenever you manifest a new mutation one of your choices will also cause you to grow a new limb at random <laughs> I'm telling you, this game gets weirder and weirder, guys, so just buckle up. Now, the Esper is what I'm going to probably go with, so let's skip it for now. We'll look at Unstable Genome, cost three, and then we'll go back to Esper. So this one, you can gain one extra mutation each time you buy this, but the mutations don't manifest right away. Whenever you gain a level, there's a 33% chance your genome destabilizes and you get to choose from three random mutations. So in a way, this is gonna add a, almost another layer of challenge to your build if you're a really, really experienced player, or maybe you just wanna like try all new stuff, you know, cause there's quite a list of mutations here. But now, like I said, I'm gonna check Esper. And as you can see right away, that disabled the physical mutation so that gives you a clue what this is you only manifest mental mutations and all of your mutation choices when manifesting a new mutation are mental and i'm pretty sure that mutation levels come each time you level up i could be wrong but let's just move here on from here so yeah the entire physical physical mutation list is disabled and then if you want to get like a, you know more points back you can put on defects very very familiar concept for a lot of people especially if you played like you know um cdda that game has this kind of a system, but um, regardless, this is disabled because they're physical. We're gonna scroll down to the mental mutations here. Very powerful, but obviously your character's not gonna be too great in melee combat. So essentially the strategy kind of for an Esper is early game weak, late game godlike. You know, that's that's the path you'll take. So be very careful early on because you can be squishy. But um beguiling let's just go through these i mean there's a list here but like i said we're we're devoting this probably this entire episode to character creation not necessarily we'll see how long how quickly i can read and how long it'll last so beguiling this one costs five remember at this point we've got 11 left after choosing esper you beguile nearby creature into serving you loyally mental attacks versus a creature with a mind success role all right we won't go into the breakdown we'll just read the general description because all the numbers and stuff, you know, of course, that'll make a lot more sense once you play it through a couple of times. But obviously this, you can just capture a creature on the map and make it your servant and fight for you and stuff. Burgeoning. You cause plants to spontaneously grow in a nearby area, hindering your enemies. Nice. A little like wild root spell you briefly gain vision of a nearby area so again roguelike meaning there's going to be parts of the map you can't see unless you're standing there looking at it but this will help circumvent that confusion you confuse nearby enemies looks like that's a cone cone effect there cryokinesis you chill a nearby ear area with your mind Affects an area of three rounds, one, two, three ticks of the, you know, the overall roguelike clock or whatever. <laughs> and freezing things, very cool. Probably fairly powerful in combination with other attacks. Disintegration, you disintegrate nearby matter. Area seven by seven around self. Gotta watch out for any of those creatures you've beguiled, I bet. 
They probably take damage from that. You're exhausted for three rounds after using this power. Ouch. Watch out for that one. Uh, another five point, uh, point spell here, mental mutation, domination. So you garrot an adjacent character's mind and control its actions while your own body lies dormant. Okay, so yeah, your body stays where it's at and you can't control and, and you now take control of the new creature. Interesting. You got to be careful though. I'm sure if your original body dies, it's probably not good. Ego projection. This is a cool one. Through sheer force of will, you perform uncanny physical feats. Wait. That's not the one I was thinking of, but... No, that just boosts your ego, I think. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, force bubble. You generate a force field around yourself. Creates a 3x3 three three force field. Very helpful for four points. Kind of costly. But probably could save your life. Then you get the force wall. So you generate a wall of force that protects you from enemies. So literally impenetrable wall. Whereas the force bubble actually does stipulate that you can fire missiles through the force field. This though, in my recollection. Oh, it actually says here. Force wall, you may fire missiles through your force field. Okay. All right. There we go. I was going to say you couldn't. But no, it says you can. So you can. Kindle, you ignite a small fire with your mind. There you go. Doesn't seem super helpful because it's not really an attack, but the ability to light fires is not a bad thing in certain situations in the caves of Cud World. Light manipulation. Now, as I recall, this was one of my go-tos right here. It sounds kind of weak, but this is like shooting bolts of light. You manipulate light to your advantage. You produce ambient light within a radius of four. You may focus light into a sheer laser beam. Doing so reduces the radiative, a radius of your ambient light by one, and then it gives us the damage, the penetration. So it's kind of dual use, but I always used it for the laser beam effect. So I'm going to go ahead and check that off. We're about halfway through getting there. Mass mind. You tap into the aggregate mind and steal power of other espers. Okay, okay. So that's very situational. You're going to need other mental mutants around you to really use that, I think. Um, mental mirror. You reflect mental attacks back at your characters. When you suffer mental attack while mental mirrors off cooldown, you gain four mental armor. Oh, that's helpful. Yeah, yeah. Now I do, and this is going to be a small tangent, but I do recall there is something. I think it's actually a negative. Evil twin. Yeah, so you can get three points here. And it says, acting on some inscrutable impulse, a parallel version of yourself travels through space and time to destroy you. Each time you embark on a new location, there's a small chance your evil twin has tracked you there and attempts to kill you every time you enter a new map tile, essentially. So this will get you three points. And things like Mental Mirror would be extremely helpful if you're fighting against an Esper. Oh, who is a version of yourself, you know what I'm saying? But that's a dangerous one. That'll end your run right there. Anyway, it's fun, real fun. Precognition, you peer into the near future. I can't remember how that one is applicable in game, but it has a use, obviously. Psychometry, this is a cool one. You read the, and this is probably one too I'll be choosing with my build here, but let's hold off for a second you read the history of artifacts by touching them learning what they do and how they were made so unerring identify artifacts artifacts up to complexity tier four that's pretty good i think learn how to construct identified artifacts up to complexity tier two must have appropriate tinker skill which we will as our start as the tinkerer you may open security doors and use some secure devices by touching them. This is immensely helpful in dungeons for sure. Because remember in this post-apocalyptic world, like the dungeons are essentially like sunken uh, office complexes or whatever else or hospitals or, you know, things that we'll be exploring. So they're going to have all kinds of electronics and whatever else security doors so let's see pyrokinesis everybody knows that one you heat an area with your mind so that would be the one if you want to go for a fire caster this would be the one again starting fires kindle is helpful in other ways than fighting so sense psychic you can sense other mental mutants through the psychic ether you detect the presence of psychic enemies within a radius of nine that's interesting. So that would help if you want to be like a psychic hunter. You could definitely use that. 
uh, space-time vortex. You sunder space-time, sending things nearby careening through a tear in the cosmic fabric. Summons a vortex that swallows everything in its path. Cool down. You may enter the vortex to teleport to a random location in CUD. Isn't that fascinating? So, can be used on the battlefield to like just zap people away to God knows where out of space time or to another location in space time, but you don't have to worry about them. Or you can just enter it and get out of there too. Who knows to where though? Okay, stunning force. You invoke a concussive force in a nearby area, throwing enemies back and stunning them. Definitely helpful. It's like a, the Jedi force pulse or force push. Creatures are pushed away. Stunned, dealt crushing damage. Sounds cool. Sunder mind. You sunder the mind of an enemy, leaving them reeling in pain for up to 10 rounds. You engage in psychic combat. Taking any other action than passing the turn will break the connection. Again, situational. Siphonim, or Vim, I'm sorry. You bond with a nearby organic creature and leech its life force. Nice. Very cool. Alright, telepathy. You may communicate with others through the psychic ether. Ch chat with anyone in vision. Takes you much less time to issue orders to companions. God, this game. Okay, teleport other to a random nearby location. So in the same map tile, but it's not like the, like the space-time vortex to another place in the world. And teleportation. You teleport to a nearby location. Same thing, just for yourself. Temporal Fugue. You quickly pass back and forth through time, creating multiple copies of yourself. Extremely good in combat. Time Dilation. You distort time around your person in order to slow your enemies. Another good one. Alright, so we have seven points. Um, let, We can look at these. Amnesia. You forget things and places. Whenever you learn a new secret, there's a chance you'll forget a secret. Whenever you return a map previously visited, there's a, that would be so annoying. Blinking tick, you teleport about uncontrollably. And remember, there are these daily challenge builds where all this stuff will be selected for you, and you might have like a blinking amnesiac, you know, you can't remember where they've been and stuff, but they're just blinking everywhere. So, anyway, uh, dystechnia, you're befuddled by technological complexity. You're much worse at examining artifacts. We're definitely not doing that one. We looked at Evil Twin, narcolepsy, everybody knows that one. Falling asleep uncontrollably. Small chance to end a round in combat. No, 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 no. Psychonic migraines. Suffer powerful psychonic... Uh, psionic, I'm sorry, mispronouncing it. Migraines that render your head extremely sensitive. Wait, you can't wear hats or helmets. Ouch. Quantum jitters. Your willful acts sometimes dent space-time. Whenever you use an activated ability, there's a small chance your focus slips and you dent space-time and local region, causing one, two space-time vortices to appear. What do they do? I don't know. That's bizarre. That's wild. Socially repugnant. Others find it difficult to tolerate you in social settings. Well, there we go. So that's all the mental mutations, positive and negative. We won't go through the physical ones, but maybe I'll do another run. Again, I'm definitely doing another run in the future when 1.0 comes out, but this is just for fun, learning the game again. So let's see, light manipulation, yes. Uh, what was the other one I liked a little bit? Let me think here for a sec. Okay, so I went through and considered very carefully, and then I just threw some points into the temporal fugue, telepathy, telepathy psychic uh sense psychic and light manipulation so that's our build and of course temporal fugue is the one that allows us to create m multiple copies of ourselves, which will shoot and stuff so i like that one a lot and these two are just kind of hangers on you know just threw those on for the remaining points not doing any defects and let's move on again we'll we'll get more of these as we level up okay very important choices here. Um, I want to boost my intelligence. Very high. We've got, I don't know, how many did I start with there? I think we started there. 42. So we got over 40 points to start with. But it does start costing more and more. You can see as I instill, or install points there. So that's maxed out at 26. Intelligence is very important. Let's do willpower. You can see it says score modifies the cooldowns of your activated abilities, determines your ability to resist mental attacks, and modifies your natural healing rate. So we're going to go up to 
20. And then agility is good for shooting, accuracy with melee and ranged weapons. So we're definitely going to want, because we're going to have our mental attacks, but we're also going to be carrying firearms or maybe a bow and arrow, you know, at least to start with. So we want to be able to have some aptitude with that let's go up to 20 and that wipes us out okay so yes strength toughness what is ego determines your potency of mental oh wait oh i should definitely increase this over will shouldn't i oh hold on now that wait that reminds me we can actually go into the deficit so let's i can't remove anything from strength or toughness damn it all right let's remove hmm. If we go to 15 on both of these, how many does that give me? 14 back. How far do we boost this? Okay, 21. That's fine. I, I don't think I want to max both of these, but this is good. Intelligence, again, going to be ex extremely important as a tinkerer. Okay, so that's done. Let's move on. And again, I think we have a chance to save this build at the end once we're ready. Export cop code to Clappy Clipboard. Yeah, save build a library. Let's do that. Name this build. I'll just put Esper. We'll say Light, since he's kind of he's going to be using that light manipulation the most. That way, I'll remember it. Okay, there we go. And there's a couple choice. One more choice. Well, our name. We'll just do. Grieve was my character when I played MMOs and stuff. So there we go. And next. Okay, now this is like the final choice before we enter the world. And essentially, it determines where we start out. So we get started Joppa, which is the place I'm most used to starting. This is probably where we'll go. This is if you're a beginner, start in Joppa. Then you got the salt marshes, a village. I guess just some random village. Yeah. Village teaches harvestry, reputation with insects and fish. You better believe it. Even the animals will remember you. <laughs> and you start with a pair of crocusins. This one is a random village in the salt dunes. Village teaches fasting way, reputation with reptiles. Start with an Isakari banner. Don't know what that is. Um, so you can see this one teaches wayfaring. Okay. What is Joppa? Yeah, it says recommended for new players. I'll show you why here too. So this one teaches butchering. I don't think Joppa teaches anything, but like I said, let's let it load up and then we will jump right in. It's a pretty quick load. There it is, and we're ready to jump in. Here we go. So I hope that UI is big enough for you guys to see. Looks pretty good over here on my second screen. So let's just see. So we've got a little bit of lore here. And yes, the most important thing in this is press F1 for help. So we'll clear this off here. Okay, now we're looking at a first look here of the game screen. This is our character right here. Unlike a lot of roguelikes, the game doesn't center each map on your character so he can move freely about. And again, I'm trying to control this mostly with the mouse, but you can do full keyboard control. I think that's how it was originally designed. So I can scroll out with my mouse wheel. Now we'll see a full view of this map tile right here. And the borders with the little arrows just indicate that you can go in each one of the four cardinal directions. So if we want to move to the south i literally just go to the edge of the screen with my little character and this is him look how close we can zoom in <laughs> it's hilarious oh my god it doesn't stop okay there's no real need to go there uh we'll zoom to about here while we're in joppa when we get into a dungeon i'll want to be out a little bit farther so i can see enemies and stuff but welcome to the world of cud here so we've got our main character and i think his the little sprite will change sometimes if you like choose a true can or something but we've got npcs scattered everywhere some farmers out here Definitely want to talk to each one of the people in the map tile here because Joppa is just a friendly little village. So they're going to give us an. Oh, and I think, yeah, if I right click here, look, it gives me Mehmet. Years of the desert have taken their toll on his body, but he commands your ear with his voice like few other men. And you wonder what sovereignty he might have come to were he not born a moisture farmer. So he's loved, hated, yada yada, we can see. So that's interesting. I recently right clicked and I didn't even know that was a true command. So let's move to him by left clicking on him. There we go. And we instantly interact with him. Uh, live and drink, friend. May you find shade in Joppa. Thanks, Mehmet. 
Let's see, what can we tell him? I'm in search of work. Your thirst is mine. My water is yours. Begin the water ritual. So that's like a formal ritual. But, And I mentioned this during character creation because I think it was briefly touched on in one of the options. But it's just a ritual you have with friendly, you know, and it'll boost your reputation with them. It'll detract your reputation with their enemies. And it will cost you one dram of water, which is currency in this world. Don't forget. So it costs a little bit of money. But let's go ahead and do it with Mehmet. You share your water with Mehmet and begin the water ritual. There we go. So now we're getting notifications. Reputation with Joppa just increased to negative 40. So we got to do a little bit more to earn their trust here. And your reputation with the pariahs decreased because they don't like Mehmet. Same with winged mammals. Yikes. Watch out for the bats, guys. Okay. And just a little... Oh, here's our dialogue options again. So now that we've done this, we've got a whole new dialogue tree here. We can trade. Well, does he have anything to trade? He's just got one vine wafer. So this is our inventory screen. Now, the one thing I noticed too in my initial load up of the game was that you can control most of the game with mo with the mouse, but I think in the inventory, you're pretty much required to use your keyboard and stuff. See, I can't do this with the mouse. Clicking on this has no effect, but either way, just thought I'd mention that. So he doesn't have much to trade. Don't worry, there are a couple vendors here in Joppa too. But So we could spend our reputation points here, as you can see, to ask him to share secrets. But all these are grayed out because we don't meet the requirements. So I'm going to back out of that tree and we're back to the original dialogue tree with Mehmet. Um, I'm in, so let me just go through this real quick. Okay. Because obviously dialogue with the NPCs is very important for opening up quests or locations and things like that. Okay, now he's given us a quest. Some critters are eating our water vines. Farouk claims he saw one sleeping around a vine patch. Ugly little thing, he says. Pale white, eight legs, and ear-splitting wine. I noticed a bit of red dirt in the water vine pool. The same we find in the soil at the nearby cave to the north we call Red Rock. So he's just given us two clues there. Um, travel to Red Rock and kill as many of the creatures as you can. Bring back the corpses of one. Uh, to Elder Rune will reward your efforts. I will accept it. So he's saying here, he's telling us the location, travel to Red Rock via the map, but a little bit of a spoiler here, and I know this just from my time playing in the past, there's actually an underground connection to Red Rock here in Joppa, and it's in the water vine pool where he spotted a bit of red dirt. If you search around, you'll find it, but I'm going to warn you, it's actually more difficult to go that direction than it is to just go over world through the map and just zoom in right to the top of Red Rock, but I don't want to get it too far into the weeds with that. Just just follow the map for starters if you're new that is um, and again the underground parts are randomized they're procedurally generated so when i say it's more difficult not necessarily you might get lucky and get a couple of easy dungeon levels that you know you can just kill whatever you wanted you to kill the water vines and get out of there but either way let's move on so we've got our quest now, one of the big reasons I think that Joppa is recommended for new players is this right here. If we go into some of these buildings, so I'm going to stand next to the door, then click it to open it. And if we move inside, what's that right there? A chest. So these chests actually belong to the villages of Joppa, though, and they'll get pissed if you if you open them without their permission and take the stuff but if we close this door by clicking on it and then quickly sneak over here and say yes it's not owned by us but we do want to open it oh look at all that weird artifact there we go so that's an unidentified like could be a grenade or something i don't know yet but a copper nugget torches a shawl we're gonna pick all this up so tab to take all and again, doors closed. Nobody witnessed that theft. This is now empty. There's nothing in that. And we've got it all in our inventory now. In addition to a few other little bits that we started with. So, again, Joppa's good for that. There's like three chests you can do that to. Not this room. Yeah, nothing in here. Those basket things, I think, are typically empty. Oh, and I can also move the map like that by holding the left mouse button. That's handy. I, there's probably an option to center the screen on your character. I don't know. I haven't looked, but 
Okay, so yeah, there's another chest here. These guys can clearly see me though, so let's close it up real quick. Yep, there we go. Burnt capacitor. I think, oops, sorry. I think that's just, uh, yeah, that's like something we'll use to craft up new artifacts. So we're taking all of it, baby. Let's go. Okay, and like I said, I'm pretty sure there's a third chest over here. Now, this is interesting to note. See the water on the ground? If you go, like I said, pure fresh water is the currency in this world. So if you go to step on it, though, and you think, oh, this is like a puddle of water. I can, I can scoop this up if I have a container, which you could do. It actually says you pass through a puddle of dilute salt. So it's salt water. And, I mean, you could scoop that up, and nobody's going to trade for that. You can't do water rituals with salt water, so keep that in mind. Something to... This is salt water, too. So, yeah, they're actually farming with it. I don't know what they're growing again. Water vines or whatever. But, anyway, just thought I'd mention that. There are sources of fresh water out there in the world you can find. They're going to be random but and rare. But, you know, like I said, if you find them, mark your map or whatever. Look, we're... Oh! Oh, he came into the building. Oh, sneaky little guy. He's the warden. Okay, your thirst is mine. Let's do the water ritual. We're being all nice up front with them. Then we're just ransacking their buildings when they're not looking. Oh, uh, like any true adventurer would. Okay, live and drink water, brother. What do you got to trade? It is nothing. It's all in his chest. Um, all right, so we're just going to back out. We'll wait for him to pass... He'll, he'll come out of there. He will. He'll move around as we... Yep, there. I think he just left. Okay. Grab it. Yes. Okay, now he can't come in when we're on this screen, so we can safely look at all this stuff if we want to, you know, just go through and inspect it or whatever. But I'm just going to take it, and we will move on. Now, last thing about Joppa. Well, there's probably a few other key details that I might not be covering because I'm still relatively uh, rusty. Uh, no pun intended, but uh, one thing I will note is the vendors over here. So we've ransacked the three chests. Next, you would really want to go in there and like identify your artifact. So let's go to G real quick. Okay. And when I select it, we can examine it. You identify weird artifact as flaming staff. Now, normally... If you're not a tinkerer, if you don't have the psychometry skill or whatever, that wouldn't probably work. You're going to need to like have an expert identified or you're going to need to learn. But with our incredible tinkering skills and abilities, we were able to... I don't know what a flaming staff is. I've never seen that, but probably a melee weapon. Oh, we so there's batteries and stuff. So cells, you're going to need to find cells and charge them up and stuff for certain items. Mark is important. Let's look at it. Quarters, Quartersong Witchwood wears a thousand nicks along its warped length. No cell. So you could still probably bludgeon people, but I don't think the flaming component would probably work. Daze is on critical. Yep, flaming when powered. This weapon deals with additional one heat. I mean, it's a cool weapon, but it's not very strong. It's, is it in perfect condition? Because it doesn't seem to indicate that there in the description, but whatever. So that's cool. Uh, this would definitely be something I'd probably either sell or since we are a tinkerer, I think we can also break artifacts down, right? Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe not this one since this is an actual item. I don't know, but I thought you could break stuff down too and use like the components for other recipes. But either way, like I mentioned, we got grenades here. These we actually already know, so I don't need to examine them. We got a data disk, which is like a blueprint. I think we just want to learn this. Yeah, if we learn this, it'll disappear the item, and it goes into like our memory books or whatever. <laughs> and quilted shawl, this is another interesting thing. We should probably inspect this since it's got a colored title here that means it's like crafted essentially by i don't know we'll see if we inspect it so let's look at it now 
this is important for a lot of items because it can open up locations and things like that and even give you a little quest to like go there and like introduce yourself or whatever but it gives a description and it gives us tells us it's cold resistant now if we push space and clear okay so we didn't get any pop-ups for that notifying like it was made in such and such place here it is on the world map but that will occasionally happen let's go to one of these grenades actually i want to look at this one okay and see we can disassemble these let's just do that and we receive tinkering bits bb1 okay there we go and if we look our bits is listed somewhere it's like a separate screen and it's just basically like crafting resources so your recipes will want you to have certain kinds of bits but anyway guys i and like i said there's another vendor here in the town of Joppa, he's over here to the left. And he's got a couple of quests too. All the way over here. Right there. Right here by this sign. This guy right here next to the chest. And don't try and steal from these chests because there's no door. And this guy's like always in here. So our guy, yeah, he's got some quests for you and stuff. But like I said at the outset, just kind of having some fun, playing through, trying to relearn the game. So I think we'll call the quits for the episode today. But if you would like to see me play on with this character, let me know down in the comments section. Hit that like button for me. Subscribe to the channel, guys, for more indie games content. And of course, I will see you all on the next one.